Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. Rhett Scholl. Okay, so today we're going to do an experiment that I've been wanting to do for a long time, which involves a variac. Now, those of you that know about Eddie Van Halen's brown sounder have heard of that. That actually involves a variac. So basically, a variac is a variable transformer. There's a big control knob on the top that lets you dial in the exact amount of voltage coming out of your wall into whatever you've got plugged into it, which in our case today is going to be a guitar amp. Now, the voltage coming into the studio here in this part of Atlanta is 123 out of the wall. I know that because I can see it on my Furman power conditioner. It shows you the voltage, which is higher than what these amps are actually made for. All the contemporary amps are at 120. That's the normal setting. But if you look at the two amps that are next to Rhett, the top one is a 50s Skylark, Gibson Skylark, which is has 110 is the voltage on that. And the Fender Super Reverb under that is 117. You'll find that the black face and silver face fenders are 117. So the idea here is to see if we match the voltage, if it actually affects the sound. I've actually wanted to try this for years. I've never done it, but I've always heard about it. Obviously the famous Van Halen Brown sound is the thing. Which we're gonna try actually. We're gonna reduce it down to 89, which Eddie talks about in his interview with the Smithsonian. Let's go in the control room, check it out. First thing we're gonna do is try to recreate the brown sound. Circa 1978, Van Halen's first record. I'm gonna have Rhett play Running With The Devil to see if we can get that tone from this. This is a hand-wired Plexi, fairly new, going through the Variac, the Variac set at 120. Let's check out the speaker setup. The cabinet we're using for the Plexi is a 1971 Marshall cab with 25 watt Celestians. It looks brand new. It's been retolexed and it's had a new grill cover on it, but it has the metal handles. It's a very, very solid amp. It has the original speakers in it. The microphones we're using on this speaker is a Sennheiser MD421. And on the other speaker is a Shure SM57. The mic pre's we're using here are BAE Neve style 1032s. There's no EQ engaged. They're flat. This is a Neve 1073 mic pre with an extended EQ. We're going to start out with Rhett playing the Running With The Devil riff. We have the amp set with the Variac at 120 and the voltage on the Furman is now at 123. The voltage varies for, on your home AC, things like that, your studio AC. We've got it set at 120. We're going to start, play the riff there, and then we're going to start to turn the variac down. Let Rhett play it first. We'll listen to it and see how close we are. Rhett? Pretty yeah. good. Um, let's... Turn it down to 110. Play it again. Okay. Notice any difference in playing it? It's it's I, not I as little... it's not as immediate under my hands like on the I, like that. There's a little bit more. Uh, I, there, I hear that I hear that compression. Yeah. actually, that's happening there. It's it's like it's sagging. A yes, little bit. let's bring it down to a hundred. Wow, this is so fun <laughs> doing this. I've always wanted to do this. Okay, this is at a hundred. Uh, the voltage is at one hundred. sag way more in fact it's it's kind of it's loosened up for me to the point where it's almost hard to keep it in the pocket like that it's really really spongy now nice yeah this is down to 89 this is where eddie says the sweet spot was for him or at least in the things that i've read let's hear what it sounds like
Okay, what do you think? That, okay. The tone, that's immediately to me what jumped out. That sounds a lot like, a lot more like the record than what we were just playing. I mean, we started off super close, but that, standing in front of these speakers where I am right now, sounds and I mean, I don't know how it would feel compared to Eddie's rig, but that sounds right. Now, I don't have the amp totally dimed. I have it almost dimed. I have the treble brought back to probably eight. The mid is at six. The bass is at six. And the presence is at about six. Let's hear the 120 versus 89 back to back. <laughs> Next, we're going to play through the Fender Super Reverb, 1972 or so, Silver Faced. I ran into my good friend Peter Stroud yesterday, who is a fantastic guitar player. I'm sure a lot of you know who Peter is. He plays with Sheryl Crow. But he was telling me that he uses a Variac a lot, especially with single coil guitars and Fender amps. Not only does he dial it back to 115 for an amp of this vintage, but sometimes he says he'll go up a couple to 117 or so, he, he says it seems to reduce the hum from the pickups. Let's see if it has any hum right now, Rhett. Not um, much. Not, not much hum to start with, so. This is the guitar at 120, the wall voltage coming in to the studio. Mm -hmm. Let's lower it down to 117. Yeah. Let's try that out. Test. About the same. Maybe, Maybe a, little a little less. Lower. Maybe, yeah. Try it down at 115. Yeah, there wasn't a huge difference there. No, this is at 115. notice about that it feels a little sweeter sounding the top end brightness is not as shrill as it was especially on like that is a yeah. little more tamed it seems I don't notice as big of a difference in the sag as I was with this amp I noticed it when you went to the front pickup that it was a little tighter sounding actually yeah Yeah. yeah, it does. It's a little little rounder. It's a little less muddy. Sounds better at yeah. 15. Yeah. Next, we're going to check out my 1980 Park. This is the last year that they made Park heads before the new Mitch Colby reissues, which are amazing. Uh, this particular head is basically like a JMP, the last year of JMP, transitioned to a JCM 800. Uh, it has a master volume on it and it's a killer sounding head. Now, uh, one thing I want to mention, so this is a, a different guitar that Rhett's playing. This is my, uh, my Wide Sky. These are built by Patch out in Taos, New Mexico. So it's got a uh, Curtis Novak PAF in the bridge and a Curtis Novak P90 in the neck. On the 1980 Park, we're using this Park cabinet. This is actually a Mitch Colby cabinet that goes with my Park 45100, which is one of the best amps in my studio. 
This cabinet has 25 watt Celestians in it and I've never recorded it before. Let's check it out. <laughs> So we're running at 120. The amp can go 110. I'm going to reduce it down to see how much it affects the tone. Okay, so that's at 110. Then go back to 120. Same thing. I think it sounds better. It does. It's darker. It's a little sweeter, I think. It's not as bright, but especially on like these, uh, if you roll the volume off this like That's where it really There's a little more pick attack on 120 versus 110. I hear that bell sound. The guitar sounds great. Okay, recap here, Rhett. It's honestly, it's it's astonishing. Um, the difference especially when you're when you're playing uh, on the on the plexi i think it's more apparent with an overdriven sound it's it's uh, apparent in the feel and the response we're not we're not electricians or amp techs or amp designers by any means but the thing i've always heard too is with especially with vintage amps is you want to run them at the voltage they were designed to be run at in order to uh to preserve the transformers and the circuitry in the amp don't turn the variac above what it should be, right. okay? Otherwise, you can damage your amp. Now, it will decrease the tube life if you drop down like we did on the Plexi down to, you know, 90 or so. Let me know your thoughts. Put them in the comments here, what you think about the sound of the variac, if you think it makes a big difference or not. And don't screw your amps up. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe if you're a first-time viewer ring the bell. That'll let you know when I go live and when a new video comes out. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. That's very important. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. Check out the new Beato Ear Training program at beatoeartraining.com. And if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks for watching.